Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah. I'm a homeschooling mom of, I almost said six. I'm a homeschooling mom of four and I live in Tennessee. And today I'm just going to take you along on our homeschool day. <laughs> we'll see what happens. So we're going to start out with history and go from there. So we have piano lessons later today and everything. So I'm just going to take you guys along for the ride. Let's go. Rebecca's just been brushing up on a few of her old songs from when she used to take piano lessons. So she says she does not like the rigidity of taking lessons and having to practice every day, but she really likes just playing around, right? Yep. <laughs> okay, good job. Are you ready to get history started? No. Oh, come on, it's my favorite subject. <laughs> Okay, you ready to get started, Hannah? History, you get to join us for this. We just finished up our science unit on mammals by the good and the beautiful. It was excellent. And you have biology, right? So you didn't need to do that with us. But now we're on to history, and the good and the beautiful does have ninth grade history extensions. So I have your notebook out right here, all ready for that. You ready? Okay, it's on Mesopotamia. I don't have a choice. You do not have a choice, you are right. And the kids are out here brushing the cat. She's gotten quite friendly in her old age. It's interesting. She used to be one that never let you hardly pet her or anything, and now she lets you hold her and almost like she ventures into the house. It's really funny. <laughs> oh dear. This is Oreo. She is probably, I don't know, 16 years old. So She's been a good little cat. Meanwhile, Caleb's found the mud again. Oh my goodness sakes, y'all. Does anybody else's boys do this? <laughs> I guess if you live in the country, you have mud, right? Oh my. He's having a blast, just like a little piggy wallowing in the mud. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we'll let him stay out here in the, the drippy day. This is the tail end of Hurricane or Tropical Storm Delta coming through Tennessee, so we've had a wet weekend. I've been working my way through the book, or the, well, the book of James, but the study manual, James, The Steadfast Life. This is by, um, let's see if it'll come up, The Daily Grace Co. <clears throat> they have so many great Bible studies, and a lot of times they'll have $5 sales um, where you can get their studies for just $5. So um, they make really great Christmas gifts and stuff. They're absolutely beautiful, so extremely aesthetically pleasing and um, yeah it goes all the way through the book of James um, just verse by verse and then you write out your thoughts it's such incredible insight the people who write these are just they're really gifted by the Holy Spirit to understand the Bible and the Word and um, really enjoying this study of, of James and I have one of Ephesians as well so anyway I pair it with my um, she reads truth um, Christian standard Bible they have one in leather which I almost wish that um, we would have just paid the extra and got the beautiful leather edition of this Bible but I really like it um, the English Standard Version is just really simple to read and understand um, and it has so many fun extras in here. Lots of maps and at the beginning of every chapter um, it'll talk about like where they're coming from, um, who wrote the book. Um, I was going to see if I could find it for you guys. But yeah, it'll have a beautiful written verse. And then it tells you kind of the background and the timeline that Second Kings and you know all the chapters were written in. And then it'll have a map. And then it'll also have a going deeper section um, in kind of like a reading plan for the book and um, parallel reading. Sorry, parallel reading portions. So anyway, this has been just a beautiful Bible to read, and I like to just 
read that along with um, my study. So anyway, all right, I guess she is tired of waiting around on us for history and you look like you're doing biology. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know where our other kids went, but I need to find them so we can get started. Because we're ready to read all about um, our story is, If You Lived in Mesopotamia, and chapter one on Mesopotamia. So anyway, we've already read our read aloud for this unit. Let me see if I can find that real quick. It was an excellent book and I'd, I'd like to recommend it to y'all. Well, I don't know. I looked around for it, but I didn't find it. If I come across it later, I'll show it to you. But the book is called Slave Boy in Judea. And I just thought it really um, um, depicted life back in that timeline really well. And um, it was just a really good story. All the kids enjoyed it. And, you know, it was kind of one of those books where it was like, read one more chapter, read another chapter. It's really good. So anyway, yeah, we really enjoyed it. Slave Boy in Judea. And it goes along with year three in the Good and the Beautiful History. Why do you think that Mesopotamia was given the nickname Cradle of Civilization? Think of a cradle and tell me why you think that it might have that name. What do you think? Hmm? What are you doing, Elsie? Any idea? Kind of the birthplace? What does a cradle do? Rocks back and forth. It does. What does a cradle have in it? A baby. A baby. Okay, so do you think that maybe that's where um, it was like the birthplace of our civilization? It's where everything began? Maybe. Okay, well, let's read on. Mesopotamia is one of the areas in which we have the oldest physical proof of civilization. Okay? Scholars do not always agree on exactly where the first cities developed, but many believe they were in Mesopotamia. What? What's up, bud? I put these two here, blankie here, and this for my back, and a blankie under here for my Boy, you must be really, really comfortable. Yeah. Okay, you just listen into history, aren't you? Hi, Pangui. How are you today? Good. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> so, the girls are going to start, well, they're going to try to write um, cuneiform. Um, the Good and the Beautiful gives some illustrations. That top one is freedom and then the middle one is proud and the bottom one is palace or temple and so they're actually going to try to um write cuneiform is it more difficult than how we write what do you think yeah yeah pretty cool which one are you doing the freedom one the top one probably yeah yeah cool it's pretty neat Guess what? Hmm. Your letter today is P. P. Pingui. <laughs> That's your letter. So this is the uppercase P. All right. P says Pingui. Yeah, it says P. P. Uh oh, Pingui fell to the ground. The P says P. The P says P. Every letter makes a sound. The P says P. P. <laughs> All right. Can you get yourself a color here? What color would Pangui like you to make all the P's? I'm coming, Rebecca. What color would Pangui like you to make the P's? <gasps> I want blue! I want blue! Okay, he wants blue. No, he doesn't. Oh, he doesn't. Black and white. Okay, well black would show up, right? But not white on your paper. Okay, so can you very carefully, you're gonna draw the line down, hold it correctly. How do you hold it? There you go. Like this. That's right. You go down. Nuh-uh. Nuh-uh, you start up here. Start up here. And oh over. <laughs> and around. 
Okay. And generally, you're supposed to start down and then go like that. Okay, I gotta help Rebecca. Can you start? Okay. <laughs> Good job. Okay, the 12th day of March. This is teaching textbooks math. Grade four. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. So, what says... <laughs> it looks different, isn't it? There's a lot of strange um, options, isn't there? 12th day of March for 1945. So we know that this isn't right because there's like a period and then a comma as well. That looks weird. Mar 12th, that looks weird too, doesn't it? March 12th, that looks weird. Mar 12, 1945, what about that? Sounds good. Yeah. I wish I could do that. Oh, this look how good you are. Oh, look what. November 7th for the year 2000. November 7th. Whose birthday is on November 7th? I don't know. Hannah's. <laughs> what does Pangui say? <laughs> oh, he thought that you did a good job. He said. Wow, what's this? That color because he wants his nose to look that color. Oh, he wants his nose yellow too. Okay. Oh. It's, his, it's his letter. Okay, it's his color for Peepa Pangui. Very good. Yeah, where's the triangle? Okay, good. Now find the nickel and put it on the triangle. What one is the nickel? This one. No. What is that one? And what is that one? Okay, this one is a dime, remember? We have the dime, and that's ten. This is the nickel. Yes, that one is five. And this is the penny, right? Okay, now you're going to need to put the penny on the oval. So where's the penny and the oval? That's right, penny, and where's the oval? Good job! Now you need to put the dime on the square. Yeah. Very good. Okay, what are you studying now, Hannah? Health. Health, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are you learning? Good muscle tone and posture. Okay. So how do we get good? You're fine. <laughs> How do we get good muscle tone and posture? Through exercise. Through exercise. Interesting. Hmm. Did you hear her thing? Are you sure you're not a grown up? <laughs> Rebecca's math. <laughs> Can I show your name? So this is Ace Paces, Mama. and I think she's on the second book now. No. And um, it just gives her a section to read, and then she has to um, fill Sorry, in the blanks and stuff. Your handwriting looks fine. Fill in the blanks with the, the correct writing and stuff Mama, and Mama, answers. Mama. So, Mama. Um, yeah, it's a good, whoops, careful. We what? This is how much fingers it takes to hold this. It does. Okay. See? Wow. Great. So, um, yeah, she just goes through here and does several pages a day, and I think there's six booklets in this course um, for her ninth grade health. So. <laughs> okay, we're ready for our next game. Where are the pets hidden? Which one are you going to guess first? This one. <gasps> okay, what letter is that? I don't know. <sighs> G, 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 okay, lift it up, <gasps> you found one, it's the kitty, okay, so we got oh, yeah, that, got that was really good, okay, what's the next one that you want to pick? Okay, what letter is that? What letter is it? M, 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 what, what letter is it? M. M, what does M say? M, okay, pick it up, see if there's something under it, uh-oh, nothing under it, 
Okay, go to the next one. I'm trying to. What letter was it? Um. N. 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 Good job. Okay, what are you doing now? I don't remember. You don't know what you're doing? Sagacious. Is it called typing? <laughs> what are these words that you're doing? <laughs> what are you doing now? All right, you're in <laughs> unit three of high school two and learning some interesting words, huh? Anomaly. Anomaly. Allude. Sagacious, quick of thought or discernment, wise or shrewd. People often consulted the village elders for their sagacious advice. Shrewd advice. <laughs> okay. In all the letters you have. <laughs> and I'm supposed to find them? Okay, I'll find them, but you have to tell me what the letter says, okay? All right, I'm going to guess this one. What is the letter? You have to say the letter. No, I know the letters. So in order for me to guess it, you got to say what the letter is. Go here. Okay. What is this one? I don't know. M. Monkey. All right, let me see. I didn't know it had one in there. Okay, I'm gonna pick this one. What is this letter? I don't know. D. 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 Donut. Donut. Oh, that's <laughs> an under. Okay, I'm gonna pick this one. What's this letter? Because you get to circle a letter that goes with the picture. So what is this? What is this thing? Um. That's not a monkey. Oh, oh, right there is. You're right. What is this? I thought you were saying that. <laughs> What's this one? Okay. Pig. What does pig say? Or what is the letter? Pig. Which one of these? That's right. P. P. Pig. I can see another pig. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Right here. So what was this one? M monkey. Okay, where's the m m monkey? Where's an M? Oh. There you go. Okay. M and N are very close. One has two humps and one has only one. Alright, you got to pick your sticker for your typing lesson. This is um, the good and the beautiful, and she is doing typing one. So we just did she just put a sticker when she's completed a page. So Mama, look. It's pretty fun. All right, Mama. ready to pull out the next stuff? Mama. Oh, handwriting. Handwriting. Like yeah, you're right. So the plants need dirt and water and sun and seeds to grow. <laughs> Yep, and so this is the good and the beautiful um, pre-K handwriting. It just gets them um, knowing how to trace lines and um, follow directions, and plus they get to color trees and <laughs> all the little pictures along the way. So Rebecca is working on her handwriting, and she's learning cursive. Rebecca's writing in her little book. It's called um, Explode the Code, right? Yeah, Explode the P Code, level four. And it's just a fun little um, kind of phonics sort of workbook. This um, right now is dealing with all kinds of um, compound words, right? Now, what do you need at the end of this to make the O say O? E. That's right. So we've got... Um, We've got flagpole, pig pen, bathtub, cupcake, wash tub, and Mama, we have why? sand. <laughs> Thanks, Caleb. To my sand box. <laughs> what do you think that this needs to be instead of an A? Ox. E. 
Oh. There you go, sand box. And the page she's working on now is adding um, suffixes to the end of a root word. So things like stillness, black est. What's this word? Pinching. Hmm. Pinching, that's right. All right, you ready to listen to over here while we do your language arts? It's all about different kinds of books. And some books are not the best books to read, are they? And then some books are really good for us. And other books are just fun, but they don't really hold any educational value per se. So we're going to read about those now, okay? All right. While Rebecca is working on her language arts, Caleb's over here with these um, straws and connectors. We just got them off of Amazon. It's a big set. There's uh, 800 pieces in this set. They're pretty cheap, but they have these fun little um, connector deals with them and straws and you can build all kinds of really neat things with it can't you yeah so caleb's building something cool over here in the living room <laughs> anna's doing such a good job with this song let's see if we can sneak in on her She's practicing her violin for her lesson later today, and one of the songs she's practicing is by the Petersons, which uh, you can listen to on YouTube or Spotify. Anyway, we really like their music. It's kind of bluegrassy. And uh, anyway, so she's practicing one right now. All right, let's do our spelling. We're gonna hop on one foot here. No. All right, our first word is succeed. Come here, come here, you got to here. Should I turn the camera so they can see you? No. Sorry guys, she just doesn't want you guys to watch her jumping on one foot while she spells her spelling words. <laughs> but that's what we're gonna do, so. <laughs> All right, so while the kids are building cool straw features, we are going to um, read Mr. Apple's Family. Really cute book here. It's actually also from The Good and the Beautiful. We really like The Good and the Beautiful, if you can't tell. They just have a lot of really um, good quality um, material. So anyway, that's what we're gonna do now. So the Apple children were named for real apples. Mrs. Apple did not like the idea of having of Mr. Apples very much. Macintosh is just too big a name for a tiny baby, said Mrs. Apple. He will not be a tiny baby long, said Mr. Apple. We'll call him Mac for short. So here's Mr. Apple, and here's little baby Macintosh. See him? <laughs> Mrs. Apple saw that Mr. Apple very much wanted to call the baby Macintosh. Very well, said Mrs. Apple. We'll call him Mac. She knew she could not have her own way all the time. Mr. Apple must sometimes have what he wanted, so when the second little apple came, he was named Jonathan. He was called John for short. Mrs. Apple got used to the idea of Macintosh and Jonathan for her two boys. She even boasted a little to the neighbors. Here's Mrs. Macintosh, or Mrs. Mrs. Apple. See, and there's little Jonathan and Macintosh. <laughs> Mr. Apple's very clever, Mrs. Apple would say. He has such fine ideas. No one but a man as clever as Mr. Apple would have thought of naming his children for real apples. And then the first little girl came along. It was much harder for Mr. Apple to think of an apple name for a little girl. If apple she had been a boy, said Mr. Apple, I could have named her Spitzenberg and she could have been Spitz for short. Well, she's not a boy, and she cannot be named Spitzenberg, said Mrs. Apple. A little girl should have a pretty girl, pretty name, and she cannot be called Spitz. How would delicious be? 
asked Mr. Apple. There's a fine apple named Delicious. What am I doing? Delicious is a beautiful name, said Mrs. Apple happily. I think we'll call her Del Delia for short. What have you made? A chair. Look at that! You certainly have. Can you sit in it? <laughs> Not too well, can you? Oh dear. Oh, I broke my legs off. Oh Maybe no. What are you making, Caleb? Another house, okay. It's going to be up like this. Wow, this is so exciting. These are fun to build with, aren't they? Uh, and the chair is going to be in it. Like okay, the this. chair is going to be in the house. He's, ma he's making that. Oh, that is really fantastic. I don't think I'm making it. That's a pretty cool house. and I'll help him when he gets home later today. So he does a lot of like easy peasy and teaching textbooks and I try to get him in on like our science and stuff like that. So anyway, that's what he's doing. Um, I was just looking, um, they just released the new and updated level four of the Good and the Beautiful Language Arts and I so wish that it had been released earlier in the year because um, it really looks good. So if you guys are thinking about um, The Good and the Beautiful and you have somebody that's in level four or whatever, it, I don't know, I'm, it looks so good, I'm almost tempted to get it, except that it's, I don't know, I mean I could print it out myself for free, because it is free on their website, but it's like, I think $70 or something to actually buy it, so. I'm not really wanting to do that since we're already like at less than 25, I think. But anyway, um, definitely would recommend looking into that if you have somebody in that level. I was also looking at some of their new releases and things that are coming out and uh, they just have so many good things. I think we'll do like geology and anthropods for science next year. They look like really fun units and they're coming out with lots of new things for like my youngest son's age and um, little activities to go along with us while we're studying. So that's really fun. But anyway, uh, it seemed like there was something else I was going to say. Oh, they are releasing level five, the updated version of level five um, in the summer, next summer. So it should be done then by the time we would need it. So that'd be really good. We'll just do that. But Anyway, I'm gonna finally get to my little Bible study and then it's time for lunch and then we head off for music lessons.
it's now 12 o'clock and we're gonna have some lunch, head to piano lessons, like I said, and then the afternoon will be full of extra things and um, making supper and all that sort of stuff. So anyway, I hope that just gave you a fun little peek into our homeschool day. Every day is different, you guys. It never looks quite the same. That's why I always have a hard time filming these because I'm like, well, this is a really good day, but then like tomorrow may be a lot different. So anyway, we just do the best that we can and just keep plugging along and every day is a learning day. So anyway, um, are you guys homeschooling this year? And is it a new thing for you, or have you been homeschooling for a long time? I'm actually a homeschool graduate, and um, yeah, we've been homeschooling our kids the whole way through. Hannah is in ninth grade, Rebecca's in fourth, um, I forgot, Nathan's in seventh, and then we have Caleb doing um, preschool. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's um, video. If you did, give this video a big thumbs up, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you guys join our little um, home here on YouTube. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.